Second, on the meeting. <laughs> now, this is an assertive little child, okay? You may have your own style of leading a temple, a meeting, a zone. Each one has got their own personality. Huh? But you are responsible. If you are the chair, especially if you are the zone of supervisor, you are responsible. It's, it's, it's your responsibility. So, again, don't think, well, I put people together, I put a date, and then let the Holy Spirit take over. It does not work that, that, does not work that way. Take charge. Sometimes taking charge it may mean let somebody else facilitate. You know that? Sometime in the GBC meeting, this chair knows that facilitating meeting is not really his thing. And many times, Rajviari Prabhu, many times, especially in the past, Rajviari Prabhu was facilitating the meeting. He's not a chair, he's not a GBC, but the GBC chair, because knows he's good, he's a professional. So then he puts Rajviari to chair the meeting. So sometimes taking charge may even mean don't facilitate yourself, but you're still responsible. Chair is not a ceremonial post. Start on time, end on time. Two of you brought it up. Uh, respect people. See, if, if, if a person comes late, say, you, and you wait for the person, 10 minutes, you have eight people, 10 minutes into eight, you, you basically uh, wasted 80 minutes of time of your top leaders. Okay? When I have this experience personally. When you start on time, people get to know that you start on time. And they, they, you'll see them. You will see them. That they will come on time. Or they will be very apologetic. Right now, in some places, the meeting is 11 o'clock. 11.5, some people start entering with this body language. As if, he had, as if he was not late, you know? Did you ever seen that? How many of you seen that? Person comes in late, and the body language says, I mean, you are really blessed that I came to this meeting, you know? What kind of merciful leader I am that I grace the pavement with my lotus feet. So when people come to the meeting late, and you already started, they feel bad. And they should feel bad. And on time. I mean, this is like, in one sense, it's even harder. It's even harder. First of all, first of all, it takes planning. Planning. You cannot start the review of the meeting when the meeting is over. If the meeting is over at 12, you cannot do, okay, it's 12 o'clock, so let's review the meeting. 12 means it's end. It's a time where people can get up and go. So you need to plan. Okay, last five minutes, no more contributions. We are going to review the tasks, everything clear. Please, always remember, your role is not only administrative or managerial. It's cultural. What you do creates a culture. What you don't do creates a culture. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, creates a culture. Because it gives the message, this is how we do things here. Okay. And, again, you need to be very clear in your purpose. Your purpose of your existence in that hour is to move the agenda forward. To cover those things. You're not there for a friendly chat. There is time for friendly chat during breakfast, during lunch, during, maybe during a, a parikrama. There is time in life for friendly chat, for relaxed, for taking a swim. But during the meeting, we are there to move the agenda forward. That's why we came. Tapamisha Prabhu, I'm sure what you are going to say will move the agenda forward. Prabhu, I want some help on this point when you said start on time and end on time. Ah. Often there is 
this idea of moving the agenda forward, but within devotees who are doing this voluntarily, you come into a group and everybody wants to speak. Often, they repeat the points that others have covered. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, you, you keep wondering what to do because time is ticking. You want to make sure that there's an outcome out of respect because somebody could be an elderly devotee who's uh, respectful. But you can see that it's, it's not moving forward. So how, what techniques do you use to address this amongst devotees? There are special Vedic mantras like Maharaj uh, Prabhu already talked about that. Do you have anything new? Like I give you an example in this Tuesday meeting. In this Tuesday meeting we had, I tell you, we had one, two, three, four GBCs, of which two sannyasis. Then we had two more uh, Prabhupada disciples. Then we have another two, all big leaders, okay? And they asked me to facilitate. And then I needed to move the agenda forward. It's only one hour. And especially when you're on the phone, it's kind of, what do you call? Um, wobbly you know because you never know who start talking there is no body language you know somebody come from here somebody come from there so i was telling anything new on this any different idea and people did not have different ideas okay we discussed this any different idea any objection to what has been said so in other words you are very clear what kind of contributions. In other words, you're not asking any philosophical, sociological, historical, psychological insight on the themes that we are discussing today. You're not asking that. There is a room for that, but that's not that our meeting. So you need to kind of frame, frame, Everybody understand frame? You frame. Now we discuss this. And there is a contribution on the table. Huh? This Prabhu said, we should do A, B, and C. Okay, anybody is against that idea? And sometimes you have to say, Maharaj. And I say Maharaj because obviously they're the top of the uh, sanctified food chain. Uh, so... Maharaj, right now we are talking this. We are also human beings. I, special human beings, extraordinary human beings, outstanding human beings. But they are also human beings. So you need to have an arsenal of how you frame what we are exactly discussing. Huh? And sometimes you have to say, Maharaj, uh, we already covered that. We moved to another item. Maharaj, I'm sorry, we moved to another item now. There was one element that I've seen, Prabhu, that the people need to have confidence in you and have respect for you. For a newbie or a new person in the group, if he's asked to facilitate, a lot of people try to then steamroll. And because of personal issues, etc., they will. <laughs> but that's, that's, what, that's why I'm saying you own the meeting. You can, if you are the chair, you can step into the chair thinking, oh, he's uh, uh, t joined 20 years before me, or oh, he's uh, two ashram above me, he is doing uh, book distribution since uh, time immemorial, and, uh, you know, she is very angry if I... <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't say anything, because she's, you know, she's going to burn some Brahmastra, you know. You know. Then then you cannot do the service, you follow. And people respect that. You see, we have passion, people want to talk, but people respect that. They may not enjoy it, they may not enjoy it, but they respect that. Okay, when, I don't know, but when you're taking your snacks or talking, you're having your break, huh, legitimate break, when you hear the bell, you may not enjoy the bell, right? You mean, oh, yeah, I was waiting for this bell. No, you were in the conversation. Okay? But I think intellectually you appreciate. 
you appreciate that there is an organization that we say a time, then somebody reminds you, right? You appreciate that. Not that, okay, 15 minutes, and then we hope. Jesus, Mary, Holy Spirit, let them, let them come back in time, you know. No, we ring the bell. Yes, Akura Prabhu. I understand what Tapan Mishra Prabhu is trying to say. I go through similar kind of thing in the SPPC. I'm supposed <laughs> to chair the meeting. My own guru is there and four other gurus are there and I'm the junior most. But slowly and gradually, they're understanding the mood that he's there to facilitate and if we don't let him facilitate at the end of the meeting, we haven't gone anywhere. So they completely derail me, but then at the break time, they come and kind of apologize in their own way, not a real apology, but kind of sort of an apology that, you know, I did this to you. And so it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Keep focused on the purpose. What are you there to achieve? Be very, very careful. Uh, Rukmini Krishna Prabhu, and then we move on. Like, for instance, okay? Then we move on, yeah. okay? Then we move on. I told you, move on. Maybe you have another question, but sorry, we move on. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Now, you start at time. What happens sometimes, majority of the members don't come on time. So we quorum. already discussed that. The quorum is not I'm complete. joking, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quorum is not complete, we can't start the meeting. Uh -huh. So should we tell that we'll, uh, we'll extend that ending time or what should we do? Or should we reduce the agenda? You see, when we talk about quorum, means it's an official meeting, it might have a legal uh, validity, and sometimes you cannot take decisions if you don't have a quorum. And in different, uh, different circumstances, there are different rules. Sometimes you can extend the meeting with the permission of the majority, sometimes you, you need the unanimity of the members to extend the meetings. So each meeting will have its own rules, okay? So a meeting can be extended, and sometimes a meeting has to be extended. Hmm? But there are different procedures, yeah. So manage the conversation, keep it timely, useful, and relevant. Refocus, refocus, refocus. You need to be, see people sometimes come with different moods, okay? They may have been in a preaching engagement, they have been traveling just off uh, an airplane, uh, they may, some people, in uh, some ca case, uh, they just woke up or whatever, okay? They come to the meeting, they kind of, some struggling to the meeting. Some people, you know, was the meeting today, right? Was it this time? No? So they were not complete. So your, your part of your service is refocus. Yes, Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu? Yes, Mataji? We are discussing this. Huh? Now we are discussing, should this devotee be made the head pujari or not? Anybody wants to say, something in favor, anybody wants to say uh, something against, we're not talking about the schedule of deity worship, we're not talking if we need new pots, we'll get to that later or in another meeting, we're discussing if so and so needs to become head pujari. Anybody, any comment in favor or any comment uh, against? So you refocus, 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 it's hard work. It's not because we are sitting in comfortable chair, you know. Uh, that means it's not relaxed time. It's not down time. Sometimes it may be the most intense time of your day. You need to really be on the ball. You know the expression, on the ball. You got to be what's happening. The, the, folk, the, the agenda, is it moving forward? No, what time is it? Okay. We're left with 15 minutes. We have two agenda items. We need to move it forward. So refocus, refocus, refocus. It's hard work. And sometimes you might have to prepare for the same amount of time of the meeting or sometimes more. 
just like a uh, no, sportsman. A uh, football match is 90 minutes, okay? But they prepare all week. They work hours and hours and hours for those 90 minutes. They're not just relaxing all week and then they step into the field. It might be very clear what we need to accomplish. Sutta Prabhu, and then we move on. Sometimes as the chair of a meeting, we also have very strong views and opinions. Uh -huh. so can you just say something about how to balance that and how to be aware of Technically, that? Technically, if you have a, a strong opinions, you might want to step out of the chair, give the chair to somebody else. And just say, sorry, on this I have strong opinion, so I will not be neutral. Huh? And so I step out of the chair. Or in an informal say, way, say, look, I'm serving as the chair, but I also have a strong opinion. I wish to present it, not as the chair, but as a, a member. Definitely, you want to avoid the conflict of interest because you are chair, you push your agenda, uh, you push your items. Sometimes it's perfectly legitimate to give the chair to somebody else and say, sorry, for the next 10 minutes, I'll be arguing like anybody else. Make sure the decisions are captured. This is your job. Huh? Make sure somebody needs to capture this. Otherwise, it's like uh, letting a, a maprashad uh, plate in the corridor. Huh? You come back, there's nothing left. <laughs> the work, the work, the idea, the decisions are there. If you don't capture them, the loss. Summarize the conclusion so everybody understands what we decided. Who does what by when? Please remember this. It's just a simple mantra. Who does what by when? Who? Somebody should be accountable, responsible. What exactly the person has to be doing? Huh? And by when? Not just I will do. No, before leaving the body, before next life, before going to Goloka Vrindavan, I'll do. No, by when? Two days, three days, some, something, I uh, have a very tight deadline, 12 hours, 24 hours. Within 24 hours, you have to edit this document. You have to edit this document. I've seen, for instance, I don't want to say which, but, you know, high-level devotees. Okay, old business. This Prabhu was supposed to talk about sanya, with the sannyasi about some very sensitive uh, issue. And then, okay, the chair brings it up. So, did you do that? No, but I, I thought, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know I was supposed to speak with Maharaj. I thought I was supposed to speak with the disciple of Maharaj and make a, uh, and that was six months before. So, six months were gone just because it was not clear what the person was supposed to do. It just was not clear. He understood one way, others understood another way. But again, it's your responsibility to make, to make clear they understand. You follow. You cannot say, well, he doesn't understand English, or he doesn't understand Polish. Who does what by when? I suggest you tattooed it on your left arms. So when you're in the meeting, you see it. It's a practical solution.